is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Uh, Brian Flores yesterday addressed the media for the Miami Dolphins. And obviously with everything that went on with George Floyd, uh, there's uh, a lot of heavy hearts right now going on in in this country. And there's a lot of passion going on in this country. Uh, Coach Flores was asked about his thoughts on what's going on nationally. Let's hear from Brian Flores. You know, what happened was, you know, in a lot of ways, a tragedy. And for me right now, uh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of anger, a lot of emotion, a lot of, a lot of emotions. Uh, but, you know, for me, I just want to make sure that the, the spotlight is on George Floyd and, you know, the horrible murder that occurred. You know, we focus on, on George Floyd, his family, and, the, and, and justice for the Floyd family. Now, you know, just like Drew Brees... Brian Flores didn't handle it right either. Doesn't make Brian Flores a bad man. Remember the Kenny Stills thing? He took out the Jay-Z songs. He didn't like it either. He didn't like the distraction. And as a black man, that probably was even worse for Kenny Stills. If it's Drew Brees, he can understand, not agree, but he can... See, every black person can understand if there's a white person that doesn't understand because they're not black. So you really don't know what it's like to walk in the shoes. Like I told you, we all have to take a moment and walk in somebody else's shoes. If you got a Jewish friend that deals with anti-Semitism, walk in his or her shoes. Somebody, one of your family members, a friend of yours is gay, and they've got to deal with bias, think about putting yourself in their shoes. And so a lot of people don't do that. And so when Drew Brees said what he said, he didn't really think about the black community at that moment. He was just thinking solely about the flag and what it stood for him. But what he doesn't realize is that that flag stands for all. And it's supposed to serve and protect all. And that's what the black community is telling you when they're protesting. That it's not serving and protecting all. And Drew Brees was not actually sympathetic to that plight. Well, in a way, Brian Flores was not sympathetic either. He was thinking too much. See, it doesn't make Brian Flores a bad guy, neither does Drew Brees. Drew Brees was thinking about his definition of the flag and his forefathers fighting for it, right? But they were fighting for people to stand up for themselves, like the black community is doing it. Coach Flores was being insensitive to his own community and to Kenny Stills by playing the Jay-Z music because it had nothing to do with race. Just like Drew Brees, has nothing to do with race. Take the race equation out. It was a bad point of view. Drew Brees had a terrible point of view the way he was looking at things. He wasn't looking at it as an American. He was only looking at it as a white American. Guess what Brian Flores' crime was? He was looking at it like a coach. Oh, it's distractions, distractions. And it is. It's a distraction. But you got to deal with it, dude. And it's also a right of an American. So he wasn't supportive of Kenny Stills like he should have been. And even more than Drew Brees, because he's supposed to understand. Again, doesn't make Brian Flores a bad man. Doesn't make Drew Brees a bad man. They just had, it had nothing to do with race. Just had the wrong point of view. One guy was focused on distractions, and the other guy had a different definition of what it meant to him. And he didn't understand that there's more. That definition needs to expand in his mind. And now it's expanding for Drew Brees. And as for Brian Flores, you know, maybe this is something 
It wasn't used in the press conference, but that's something that should have been followed up in the press conference. That in a way, hey, coach, were there any regrets with the way you handled the Kenny Still situation? Because you kind of stuck it in his face, the Jay-Z stuff. And that's not what you should have done at that moment. None of us are perfect. Okay? Understand that. We all make mistakes. And what Drew and what Brian Flores did are very correctable mistakes. Okay? That comes with understanding. Neither one was coming from a malicious point. They had their selfish points is what they were doing. Uh, Brian Flores goes on to talk about racism. Obviously not an easy subject to address. Bill, let's play Brian Flores addressing racism. You know, I think race is a tough subject for a lot of people, but I think it's something that, you know, I think a lot of people are seeing that it's it's something that we need to kind of confront head on and, and communicate and have discussions. And I think, you know, it was an opportunity to, to speak on that. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about the Rooney Rule and, and the adjustments that were made over the last uh, last week, and you know, with the events that are going on now, I just felt like it was an opportunity to 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 speak and and uh, and talk about those and have those conversations because they're important. And you know, in order to try to bring people together, I think communication is is, is vital. He had to do a little more of that with Kenny Stills, and maybe that's you know part of the learning process of being a head coach. And now that you've got to connect with players on a, on a continual basis, uh, this is going to be part of his challenge, you know? And it's been part of his personal challenge all his life, obviously, because he had to deal with it as a black man. He's got a hell of a lot more experience than you and I, that's for damn sure. But, you know, uh, he's got to get better, too, at communicating himself. Uh, here's Brian Flores talking about the kind of guidance that he is providing to players. Bill, let's play the next one for Brian. My number one thing for the for, for guys uh, is they have a right to protest, and I support you know um, their right to protest. And, but even more than that, it's it's about being careful. I want my players to be be careful. I actually had a friend who who, who was murdered in, in Indianapolis. His name is Chris Beatty, um, a good friend. Um, he actually played football with uh, Lance Bennett, who was on our staff. Uh, Beatty was full of life. He was he was a great human being, and he was. They were protesting in Indianapolis and it was murdered last weekend. So, um, you know, when I guess to me, that was the first thing that kind of came to mind when, when, when uh, Kayvon was protesting. And, and, and look, I've had a lot of conversations with players um, over the last few days and, and I support, you know, I support these guys. And I understand, you know, the emotions the um, that they're going through. But at the same time, you know, I want them to be smart. You know, I care about each one of these guys. And, you know, I had uh, a situation hit, hit, hit home. Uh, pretty closely for me and so you know there's some fear from my, my my end to be honest with you but you know i might as well you know take this time to send condolences to uh Beatty's family um, and his friends in indianapolis i mean this guy was just an incredible human being and um it's sad it's and it's that's you know just another tragedy um that we're dealing with uh, uh hopefully we, we can learn from it and and again make the necessary changes so that uh, these things don't happen again. And it'll be interesting to see because he is going to have a lot of players kneel this year. So now he will get a second chance at having to deal with this. But now because of everything that's hit home, and, and you just heard it in that sound, but even a friend of his cost him, you know, cost his life. He, he lost a friend of his who was protesting. So all of this will hit home. It'll be interesting to see how he handles it in this go-around because I guess we all have got to get past the distraction part of it and get to embracing the protest itself, okay? Now, more than kneeling has got to be done. Uh, we've got to weed out the bad people, you know what I mean? And especially in police departments all over. Now, the question that a lot of people wanted to find out as Dolphin fans, we get to some football talk now. They want to find out about Tua. Where is Tua at at this point? Coach Flores addresses the quarterback. The rookies in general, I think they've all, based on what we can do, uh, I think they've all done a good job. They're all in meetings. They're all learning. They're all doing everything they can possibly do to pick up the information, to train, 
but you know, quite honestly, you know, it's hard not to have your hands on him. Uh, specific to Tua, uh, he's working hard. He's picking up the information. You want to get your hands on him, quite honestly. Um, so I think uh, I think they're all they're all doing a good job. I think they all have a long way to go. But again, specific to the injury, I, I mean, we don't. I, mean, I haven't seen him. Um, and we, you know, our, our doctors haven't seen him. So um, you know, to give a you know to give you any information on that, or, you know, try to would be. I think it's, I shouldn't do that. So I hope that answers your question. There you go. So that, and listen, that's to be expected. Tua hasn't been around yet. He hasn't really practiced with them yet. So he, it's all virtual. We don't know anything yet. And we won't know anything until they finally take the field and they can get their hands on them and they can work them out and train them and all that. And then you'll figure everything out. I, I get it. Man, we're all dying for it, right? I mean, we're just dying for any mini camp or whatever, just to come out and see them and practice and all that. It's, it's, uh, it's sad that that a lot of fans haven't been able to have that regular, like that mini camp right after the draft would have been really fun with Tua. Would have been really cool. That that's you know these are moments that you guys deserve, and you haven't had it yet, so it's tough. But right now, they don't have anything at this point. So that's the coach addressing several subjects.